Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. We have two compact luxury SUVs competing in perhaps one of the most fiercely competitive market. 2022 Acura RDX in A-Spec format and a 2022 Genesis GV70. They are very different and also very similar. What I mean by that is that they have the same kind of luxury features, same level of comfort and all kinds of technology that will make your driving really exciting and really comfortable, but they cannot be more different in terms of the driving feel and the characteristics. So let's find out from my perspective as an automotive engineer what the differences are and what are some of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of these two vehicles. We call that SWOT analysis in the business tool sense, SWOT. So let me walk you through the SWOT analysis of these two amazing vehicles. Welcome back. So let me first, as an automotive engineer, check the paint quality of these two vehicles. I use the paint thickness gauge to measure the paint thickness. I'm going to then do a quick audit of the quality of the paint and also check for body alignment and let you know which of these vehicles are made better. The Genesis is made in Korea. This one is made in the US. Let's see if there's any differences. So first, let me check the Acura RDX. So this one says 143 micron, which is actually a little bit thicker than average premium luxury SUVs. Usually they're about 100 to 120. This one is a little bit thicker, which is a good uh, sign. What about the Genesis? You know what, it's exactly identical. So both are about 140, a bit thicker than your average SUVs. Let's check one more spot. So door is 124 on the Acura and 115, more or less the same. So as long as the thickness is between 100 to 180, that kind of meets the standard. Thicker the better, of course, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, if the paint is thicker, it's necessarily better quality. Uh, what about the gloss and the finish and uh, the surface of the paint? On the Acura, I don't see any kind of excessive uh, pigmentation or uh, orange peel. It's very smooth, really glossy paint. I think they improved the paint over the years because I wasn't too crazy about the RDX paint job when it first came out. And it looks really good in this dark gray color in the A-spec format. On the Genesis, actually equally if not more impressive with a very smooth paint, very consistent gloss from front to back. Uh, and again, I don't see any excessive amount. I would say the Genesis is slightly better, but the two are very comparable. So not much difference in terms of paint quality. What about the body gap and the body alignment? Now let's see if the body alignment and the body gaps are good or not so good on these two vehicles. Uh, again, one is made in US, one is made in Korea. Let's see if there's any differences. On the Acura side, uh, the body gaps are roughly about 6.5 to maybe even seven millimeter between the fender and the front hood, which is actually not too good. You want it to be around five millimeter usually. And then on the Genesis side, it's actually exceptionally good. It's about 4.5 millimeter to maybe max of five millimeter, which is exceptional, as good as the best I've seen from Lexus. So right here in terms of body gaps, the Genesis clearly better than the Acura. Again, nothing wrong with the uh, kind of overall fit and finish because the panels fit well together on the Acura side and the Genesis side. Just uh, on the Genesis, the panels are tighter together. And I also measure the door gaps and it's about five and a half to six millimeter on the Acura and about four and a half millimeter on Genesis. Same for the rear door and same in the back end. So again, I would say uh, there's nothing wrong with the way that uh, panels come together in the Acura, but in this case, the Genesis is clearly a little bit better. So I would say about 20% better in terms of body alignment and the overall body fit and finish on the Genesis side. So now I'm going to the interior of the two cars and check the quality, but before I do that, just a quick recap of the two specification. The Genesis GV70 does come in both the uh, four-cylinder turbocharged engine as well as a twin turbo V6, whereas the Acura RDX only comes in a four cylinder turbocharged engine. The Genesis has a slight advantage in the four cylinder version because he has 300 horsepower versus 272. 
Now, in the real world, the difference is pretty minor, and you're not going to really notice a difference. But if you're willing to pay more money than on the Genesis GV70, you have a choice of um, buying the 3.5 liter version, which has a pretty amazing horsepower and torque. So those are some of the choices you want to think about. Overall, though, the two cars are quite similar in terms of specification, but the driving feel is very different. More on that a little bit later on. But for now, let's take a look at the inside to see if we notice a big difference in terms of the fit and finish. And also, I'm going to talk about whether or not I like the design of either one of these two cars. Okay, so we are now inside the 2022 Acura RDX, which has gone through a number of changes for 2022. And so there are changes to the front, there's some changes to the back, and of course, they also refined the suspension and some of the tuning. So those are all really good thing. But what about the interior quality? Well, I do my little punch test. This time I've got a, a Canadian hockey puck here. And what I do is basically punch throughout the dash and some of the other components, see if I can make it rattle or squeak uh, to see if it's well made. So everything is really solid. I went through the whole uh, interior earlier with this approach and uh, nothing, absolutely no squeaks, no rattles, and I never heard any unusual noise on the road. So solid. Uh, inside and uh, really well made. I would say though that the interior is very busy and so now I'm going to get into the strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats for both of these vehicles. In terms of strength of the RDX, it is quite a bit more sportier than the Genesis GV70. In fact, I would even say that this is almost like a sports sedan level of uh, handling, uh, sharpness and accuracy uh, both in terms of steering and also the way that um, this SUV corners in mountainous road compared to Genesis, which is softer, more luxurious, more upscale, and more on that later when I hop into the Genesis. So the biggest difference between these two and perhaps the, uh, the most uh, impressive strength of this uh, SUV is that it really drives like a sports sedan or sports coupe in many ways. And so if you're a type of person who really wants to enjoy driving, this is the one to get over the GV70. Also, the Acura has one of the roomiest cabin and the cargo space of all the compact luxury SUVs and the resale value and the reliability has been absolutely phenomenal with the Acura. So those are some of the advantage. But in terms of the weaknesses of RDX, well, it does look and feel a little bit cheaper compared to GV70, which is similar pricing. That one does feel very upscale and it's beginning to look a little bit busy right now compared to the, the current trend, which is to simplify the design of the interior. Uh, as well, it is a bit jittery and uh, very busy on the road when it gets over a bumpy road, for example. So if you actually cross shop these two vehicles and you jump back and forth between the two, you might think that the RDX is a little bit too busy in terms of design and also a little bit bumpy and too firm for those people who are really looking for a very comfortable ride. So now I am in the 2022 Genesis GV70 and the inside is gorgeous as you can tell. But what about the quality? Well, I use the hockey puck technique and I've been hitting different variety of components and uh, everything is solid. There's not a single part that seems to be loose. It does sound a little bit more hollow than the RDX, but on the road, I heard no squeaks or rattles and everything felt very tight. So um, in terms of the interior quality, I would say the two are identical or very close to each other. But the biggest difference between the Genesis and Acura is this. Wow, look at the interior. The design, the quality of the materials, the fit and the finish, and the, the way that everything feels when you touch them makes you feel like you're driving a car that's worth twice as much. Uh, the inside looks like something out of a Bentley, let's say, and the stitching and everything else is near perfect. It's almost impossible to find any kind of mistake, errors, or defect in this in this car and even uh, something as subtle as the feel of the steering leather uh, even a little bit of rubber uh, gasket behind the steering where your hand tends to rest all these little details they've taken into account something that maybe Lexus might have done years ago these guys are doing it now and maybe even better uh, we have amazing amount of technology that's another strength of this uh, Genesis even a fingerprint authentication system here and uh, even a remote parking where you can literally step outside and uh, have the system park the car for you. Those kind of features are not available on the Acura. So uh, Genesis went all the way with the top-notch technology and amazing design. So to summarize, 
the strength of a GB70 is a beautiful interior, amazing design exterior wise. And then on the road, as I will explain to you shortly, this thing drives uh, so quietly and so refined. Honestly, you really think that you're driving something much more expensive. And also the steering feel and the feedback from the road is surprisingly good because you think that uh, because this car is so smooth and so quiet and refined, that perhaps they would have sacrificed the feel of the steering. But no, actually it has a really good road feel. In many ways, this car feels a little bit more balanced than the RDX, which is geared toward a performance or sporty side. To finish off the strength of the Genesis GV70, you also get a huge 14.5 inches uh, display here, as well as a digital cluster. And we don't get the digital cluster in the Acura RDX. So technology-wise, clearly this one is, is better than the Acura. But on the other hand, it doesn't have the same kind of brand reputation or recognition as the Acura. It's not quite proven yet. Uh, the numbers and the survey results from JD Power shows that this is as well built and as reliable as the Japanese counterparts. But of course, the uh, marketplace is still not uh, all that recognizing this brand yet. So Genesis still have a little bit more way to go to catch up to the likes of Acura, Infinity, and Lexus. And finally, when you compare uh, feature for feature, the Genesis GV70 is a little bit more expensive than Acura. So definitely the RDX is a value leader. And then also, I'm not too crazy about some of the design of the infotainment system, which can be a little bit confusing. But that applies to the entire Hyundai group, where they all tend to follow and use a similar uh, infotainment OS system. Now, what about things that Acura can improve on RDX? We call these opportunities. Well, for one thing, uh, the um, touchpad that they give us here versus the touch panel is extremely annoying. For some reason, both in the RDX and MDX, Acura still forces us to use this little pad instead of letting us use our hand to simply navigate on the actual infotainment system. This thing is not a touch panel uh, system, so you have to use this. It's really, really frustrating in terms of being able to navigate easily. If they just move this back three, four inches and make it into a true touch panel, that would be a substantial improvement. And finally, I think they really should bring the Type S version of the RDX, which I think will eventually come because they have it on MDX now. And that could be an amazing opportunity for Acura to make a, a true difference in this marketplace because there are so many competitors. Which brings us to the final part of the SWOT analysis, which is threat. And that's pretty obvious because more and more car manufacturers such as Genesis are bringing uh, SUV that have more power and torque, sometimes even at a lower price point. So uh, Acura with this RDX has proven its value over the last few years, but for the next few years, it might be difficult because of so many competition that are entering the market. Uh, so for Acura to stay uh, up to date and to be competitive, they're going to have to continue to improve this RDX. And hopefully in a few years, they'll come up with a brand new version that will truly be the benchmark once again. Before I finish off the comparison of the two SUVs, let me just talk about the driving experience of the RDX because this is by far the most impressive thing about this model. Whether you're driving on a highway or a city roads or a mountainous roads or a bumpy road, this thing handles roads better than uh, any other compact SUVs out there. It's sharp, it's precise, it goes exactly where you pointed out, and you get fair amount of road feel from the road as you're driving, and you know exactly which way your car is pointed. Uh, granted, the ride is a bit firmer than you might like, but of course for me, who likes sportier vehicles, this is the one I'm going to get if I want to enjoy driving day to day. So those are some of the interesting things about the um, uh, RDX. It is still very quiet, very smooth, and uh, in many cases, it kind of feels like a grown-up version of the TOX, which is no surprise as they share some of the chassis components. Um, but most important things to keep in mind as I finish off the uh, commentary on RDX is that if you simply want the best handling and the most interesting SUV to drive, pick this one over GV70. In terms of opportunities for improvement in the Genesis side, well, it's pretty obvious, and that is they're going to work on the brand recognition and perhaps a little bit more on the marketing so they can win the hearts of those people who are very loyal to other Japanese brands because it's not going to be easy to pull people away from Lexus, Acura, and Infinity when they have been buying those vehicles for a long time. But if somehow Genesis can convince them that this brand is worth taking a look, 
then they will be able to capture the, the minds and the heart of those uh, buyers because this is an amazing vehicle for the price. It's uh, just all around perhaps one of the best SUVs out there. And personally, if I'm going to buy a luxury compact SUV, this is the one I'm going to buy. Also, what would be really amazing is if Genesis can come up with a kind of Type S version of the EV70 with a higher performance and even more uh, performance-minded uh, look and feel outside and inside, they will literally kill the market because this thing is already so solid on the road. So I'm looking forward to the day when Genesis can give us a performance uh, sub-brand of the Genesis because that's the day I will likely put a deposit and buy this thing because I'm so impressed with the GV70. On the other hand, what about the threat for Genesis? Well, that's the last piece of the puzzle as we go through the SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats. And in that regard, Genesis just needs to beef up the entire branding so people will actually appreciate this brand and stay loyal to this brand. But also, Genesis pricing is a bit high, especially if you buy the 3.5 liter version of this, we're creeping up to the $70,000 price range, and now you can go and buy a Porsche Macan. So those are some of the things that uh, Genesis needs to keep in mind and make sure that the price is competitive. There's still very much a value factor to this, this vehicle while retaining what makes Genesis unique and special. So until such time, uh, it'll be really interesting to see how the market will continue to uh, move forward in terms of all these different uh, brands and models coming out. And I'm really looking forward to doing more comparison in the future. So to summarize, which one would I want to buy? Well, if I want something that is truly fun to drive, and I want to take it through a twisty mountain road, it's going to be the Acura RDX. But if I want to drive in total comfort and to enjoy the, uh, sort of the, some of the best luxury features and technology, this is going to be the one. It's a really difficult toss-up in terms of decision-making process, but I hope all of the, uh, the strengths and the weaknesses I talked about for both vehicles will help you decide what is the right model for you. I hope uh, you learned something from my video. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to talking about cars and trucks more and more with you. Thank you so much again. I'm signing off for now.